How can it be that the very first railway terminus in London is now completely forgotten? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. This is quite a specific topic. Like, I'm not going to be able to talk for very long on this one. How am I going to be able to alert viewers to the fact this is not a normal, length, kind of full impact video? Um, I guess you could just tell them, you know, say up front. Yeah, that would that would work. That would work. So to get to the abandoned Spa Road station, I've come to an area of London called Bermondsey, somewhere you've probably never been before, and with good reason. I'm kidding of course, Bermondsey's obviously lovely. <laughs> but we can explore the rest of Bermondsey later. For the meantime, what is Spa Road? In the 18th century, a man called Thomas Keyes owned some lands around these parts. And within that land, he discovered a mineral water source. And he quickly started marketing this, and Bermondsey became a spa town, and this road became Spa Road. The spa craze was the dot-com bubble of its day, and unfortunately, within a generation, nobody cared about mineral water anymore. But you know what was sexy in 19th century London? Trains, 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 um, anyway, the London and Greenwich Railway Company was created with the initial plan to build an exciting new thing called a railway from Greenwich through to Tooley Street near London Bridge. But we must do this quickly because other people are building other railway lines. I'm looking at you, London and Birmingham Railway. And we must be the first. We also don't have enough money to do the whole thing, so let's build the least interesting half in the middle and then start raking in the cash. So they built a line in 1836 from the Uber Industrial Deptford through to none other than Spa Road. Spa Road residents rejoice, finally something to replace the spa. And you may be thinking this is a part of the video where I say, oh, there's not much left to see of Spa Road now. But there actually is. This is the first of what would be three different versions of Spa Road Station, and the first certainly wasn't perfect. They built the viaduct so thin that buildings couldn't be provided for, and so you had to access the platforms by wooden staircases on the outside of the structure. People also would frequently just wait for the train on the tracks, so unsurprisingly it didn't take long for someone to get run over. In fact, it only took one month. They finished the line through to London Bridge that year, and unfortunately, within two years, Spa Road had become so infrequently used that it became the first railway station in London to be abandoned. It's okay. You'll be alright. Interestingly, by this point in the line, moving towards London Bridge, the designers wanted the railway line to descend from viaduct down to ground level. But in a stunning bit of 19th century foresight, they realised a number of level crossings Londoners would have to endure might become a bit of an issue, and so they scrapped that idea. The viaduct gave rise to a common practice where local gangs of children would assemble underneath at Spa Road and shout up to the train above where the tickets were being collected for the passengers to throw down their mouldy coppers, which apparently sometimes they did. Since the railway had put the local horse-drawn coach service out of business, demand eventually came to reopen Spa Road, so they widened out the viaduct and built a second station, before later creating a brand new and slightly nicer station a few hundred metres east. This one isn't actually on Spa Road, making it perhaps London's first incorrectly named railway station, but it did have a good run. It lasted for 48 years until 1915, when apparently there was some kind of war on and it was expensive and who knows, but it had to close down, sadly, for the last time. You can find relics of Spa Road version 3.0 nowadays inside a business park, including some of the signage next to the old ticket hall. It just kills me that this portal is in front of it. Ignoring the toilets for a second, this exit from the station is still used as an emergency exit when passengers need to be evacuated from the railway lines above. And over on Spa Road, I enjoyed this mural they put up of this photo, which shows what the last Spa Road station looked like in its heyday. Finally, if you ever get an eastbound train out of London Bridge, keep an eye out for the crumbling platforms of Spa Road. But also, don't lose awareness of who's around you in the carriage. There's enemies everywhere. It's a dangerous world. Always have an exit strategy. And that's the story of Spa Road, the little station that could, until it couldn't. See ya.